I play video games for the plot. The plot. Yo, what's up, guys? Over at YouTube. Hello. So I was invited to the Weathering Wave CBT 2, and I've been playing it for a few hours now, and I wanted to give my first impressions on the game because there's so many people that are looking forward to this game. I played in the previous betas as well, and I've kind of formed my own opinions on the game. I will say, going into CBT 2, I already had high expectations, and uh, I've really enjoyed what I've played so far. At that time, I really liked the boss fighting, I liked the combat, I liked the mechanics, but I will say CBT 2 took all of that and they stepped it up. So what's new with CBT 2? Well, first off, they redid like almost all of the character models in the game. Actually, maybe they did do all the character models in the game. I don't know if you guys paid attention to the first betas, but there are some pretty distinct differences in like how the characters are portrayed, the models, the way the eyes look and everything. And honestly, it just looks so much better. By the way, just, just want to make it clear this video is not sponsored. These are my first impressions. I will have a sponsored video that I'm doing with them, but uh, not this one. So this is these are my honest impressions of the game. And, and I'm going to keep it 100%. She got the biggest model do over. And I really think that she got the most love. God damn. I love her design. Fine, she is amazing. Also, I, I think the uh, Kuro may have like a bit of like a back fetish or something because like every character just has like open back. Anyways, that's not the point. What I wanted to talk about is that her eyes are shaking. That's not the point. What I wanted to talk about in this video is all of the things that I like about the game and all the things that I think are a little concerning for the game going forward. Because as someone that really likes these kinds of games, anime, open world, uh, RPGs, complex combat, stuff like that, this is a game I've been looking forward to for years. So outside of the character models, a lot of things have changed. The world is a lot prettier, a lot more vibrant. And I can actually go show you that right now. As you can see, honestly, there's just a lot more greenery uh, than there used to be, but a lot of the colors are less washed out. There still is a little bit of that grayscale, and I think it's to give it that sort of Kuro game nearer inspired look in a way where they wanted they wanted that kind of like tension with the world and how the world is built. However, it is still like very vibrant and it makes my ADHD brain activate. So if you if you, the only games you've ever played in your life are like Fortnite and Genshin, then like the colors are not going to look as appealing to you, but I will say just as a general rule, this game does look very good. So the environment has changed. A lot of the other things have changed and I'll talk about echoes in a second, which is specifically one of the new things I wanted to talk about. But one of the things they did very, very well is uh, actually rewriting the story. You know, I will say I didn't pay too much attention during CBT one, but I did pay enough attention to know that the story is not the same as it used to be. And there's some compelling characters. There's some people I'm excited to meet. There's some funny interactions. Like at one point, uh, th there's this guy that I'm pretty sure you don't have to fight at all. And then you can, you can prompt to fight him, you can say, hey, I want to fight. And then I'll be like, no, 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 we don't need to fight. And then you'll be like, no, I want to fight. And he's like, no, no, I'm not going to fight you. I'm way too powerful and you'll die. And then after the fourth time, he actually fights you. Wow. Yo, we can actually fight him. And I thought that was really funny. I like, I enjoy that kind of challenge where it's like, okay, you actually can fight this boss because you were insistent enough on picking the second or third dialogue option, right? Like that's cool. Um, one of the other things they've changed about this game uh, that I'm really excited about is Echoes. So if you guys don't know what Echoes are, the basic overview is like, these are kind of like, if you play Genshin and Star Wars, these are your artifacts or relics, except you have one that has like a, an ability that you can use. So you can see Echo ability transforms into a tortoise and slowly recovers the life during this period. Uh, this one transform into a rock guardian enter a defensive state. And this is basically you transform transform into these different things and you get different abilities. You can even do this with bosses. Once you defeat enemies, they have a chance to basically allow you to capture them. There's 238, I want to say, maybe I, I can, maybe it's 228 enemies. And you can basically catch them all like uh, like Pokemon, right? So for example, I caught this boss and I can just um I can, I can just walk around and, and, and do damage as a boss for a second. And that's cool. Like in the middle of combat, it adds some dynamics to it. It lets you like build your characters in a different and unique way. Hold on. This cat is being a fucking terror. Despite all of that, though, there is one thing that bothers me about the farming in this game. And it's the fact that the combat is incredibly complex. I love the complexity of the combat. But if the combat is going to be complex, there's going to need to be some different ways to farm that don't take your full effort every single time. Now, that may change in endgame. Maybe when we get fully built, we end up just one-shotting bosses. But just given how this game works, I doubt that's going to be the case. So I'm hopeful that there's some way to sort of circumvent having to put in full effort, full focus, just to do a daily kill or farm a boss for a certain amount of time. At the end of the day, it is a mobile game and it's going to have mobile game systems. One of the biggest problems that Genshin had was the fact that it was a game that requires triple A efforts or full effort from the player to receive mobile game rewards. And I do fear that this may be further exacerbated 
exacerbated in Wuthering Waves by the fact that the combat is more complex and takes more effort. That's probably my biggest concern about the game, but I do feel like it's pretty legit. All right, so one of the cool things about the Echoes, though, is um, similar to your artifacts and, and stuff that you would have in, like, Genshin, you have these, like, effects based on the elements or the, um, the Sonata effect is what they call it. And so you can pair things up to get uh, two-piece effects, five-piece effects, and you can have up to five things equipped at a time with your one primary one, which you can't see right now because my camera's in front of. There you go. So you have your one primary one, and then you have the four uh, other ones that you're not using the ability of, but you can still get the bonuses from and the stats from as well, which my camera's in front of now. There you go. <laughs> so that's how they work. And I think it's a really cool and unique take on gearing your characters. So the combat is obviously uh, like more complex. If you've been seeing anything about this game, you can tell there's like a lot of like combos. There's different abilities that you can throw in there. That's one of my echoes that you just saw. You also have the grappling hook. You can use that to get a little bit of air, budget attack, stuff like that. There's quick time events, QTEs. And it's really, really fun. Um, all the characters seem to, to feel pretty unique in how you play them, obviously. And then you'd like, you know, mix in Echo to make it even more unique. Another Echo that I think is really funny is just <laughs> this guy. Bro is throwing it back. Holy shit. <laughs> anyway, so he heals you and gives you some, uh, some, some safety. Bro is, bro is a whole vibe. Holy shit. That's kind of like the overview of the Echo system. It's really neat. I like how they, they implemented it. It's a really unique thing. And of course, you have your normal your normal combat stuff, QTEs, and I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit of fight footage over this while, while this is going. But yeah, I really like how unique of a take this game has on its combat and, um, and how the ex exploration is a little bit different. The way that the exploration is different is you can actually just run up walls like obviously i feel like most open world games have some kind of climbing uh but you can also just run and that's fine obviously I, I feel like this is a thing that every game is adopting that's an open world game is just like the glider which is cool i like their take on it. it's a little bit different on the topic of exploration though there are a couple things that bother me about this as well i really love open world i like walking around finding chests puzzles enemies bosses anything that you can do in any kind of open world game i love that part of the exploration however weathering waves while it does have some really great environments and really pretty environments environments, I found that oftentimes the world does feel a little bit empty. Not entirely empty as if there's nothing there, but I do find myself running into chests less often than other games, find myself running into puzzles less often, enemies less often. And it kind of de-incentivizes you to really explore as much since the rewards don't seem to be that crazy. And by rewards, I just mean things to do. I don't even necessarily mean the things you would get from chests. You have to work a little bit harder to find the things that you want to find in the overworld. And I'm hoping that this is something they can kind of flesh out a little bit more before the game launches, maybe just add more stuff. Obviously, the focus of the game is not exploration. The focus of the game is to tell a story and have really cool combat, build your characters and stuff. But as an open world game, I do hope to see a little bit more going on in the open world. Otherwise, I could see this game taking a massive hit. That's a basic overview of the game. It's an open world anime RPG with really complex combat, hard bosses. And let me emphasize hard bosses because uh, what Kuro game likes to do is make bosses very fucking difficult to beat. Um, and you can tell that with their game PGR, which is like a very popular game right now. PGR is, it has like insanely hard bosses that take you a lot of time and effort to learn the mechanics of the bosses. But once you learn the mechanics, it's like pretty easy, right? So this game also has a take on that in the open world. You can challenge bosses. As far as I know, if they haven't changed this, I'm not a high enough level to tell this is my first impressions, but I as if they haven't changed this, you can farm the bosses infinitely. It's just that they have like less drops or something unless you spend like the, the stamina, which is a good segue into stamina system. If you've played any gacha or mobile game, you usually can tell like, okay, there's going to be some kind of limiting factor in how long you can play. And there is, there is a limiting factor. However, you could still, like I said, unless they've changed this from the previous CBT, which I can't test it. Um, and when I find out, I will pin a comment, by the way, just so you guys know. You can farm infinitely. It's just that you will have reduced rewards. So using this stuff is still going to be more optimal. So, so what I wanted to talk about most in this video, actually, the one of the things that wa made me want to make this entire video was not just that I was excited about the game, but it was actually the gotcha. I don't like gotcha games. I really don't. I like games and most of those games happen to have gotcha in them, right? I like anime open world RPGs. I don't like having the pull for characters. But what I will say is that Kuro does have a history of being a little bit more generous than some of the other gotcha games that you may be used to playing. And you can see some of that translate into Wuthering Waves. What I mean by that is if you go over to the weapon, right? The weapon banner. This is going to be the weapon for Jian, who is the other character or for the uh, limited character that's up right now. Basically, if you look at this, most weapon banners uh, from a lot of the more popular gacha games that I have seen have some kind of mechanic where it's not actually guaranteed to give you the weapon. I'm not going to say most gacha games because I know not every gacha game does that. I'm just talking about a couple popular ones. And the thing that this game does that's different 
is they actually just guarantee you the the weapon if you if you get to the weapon pity or if you just if you pull a five star it's guaranteed to be that weapon now that could change from cbt to life i i won't lie like that is something they could absolutely change if they wanted to but as of as it stands right now you have a 0.8 percent of getting a five star and you are guaranteed the weapon if you pull a five star which is awesome and i really hope they don't change that as far as characters go it's the similar it's similar rates it's 0.8 percent but there is a 50 50 on characters uh, that's totally fine we don't know if there's a soft pity in this game the soft pity in genshin isn't it explicitly stated that it exists we won't know if this one exists until the game is actually live so it is what it is um here is going to be your standard banner here is your beginner banner um which a lot of games have adopted and then here is a standard weapon banner now what's cool about this is that you can actually target a specific weapon that you want to go for um I don't know that I would personally go for any of this with like any of my premium currency unless these ended up being like super good which I can't tell at the moment but you can kind of select one to be your target speaking of five star weapons there's an event in this right now and I'm not sure if it's just beta or not you have these rewards for for leveling up well first off uh free sound very cool very nice you have these sort of like leveling up rewards and you may have heard a, a rumor once upon a time about a free Ayaka at AR42 um I don't remember what game that's from guys I I don't I don't know what what you're talking about I just well at uh at the rank 45 in this game they actually give you a five-star weapon that could just be beta it could just be beta but knowing Kuro's history I don't think they're gonna change that I think they actually might give us genuinely a five-star weapon from the winter broom series so that's pretty damn cool right obviously lots of free pulls uh as you level up these are the, you know normal event stuff uh you do get a free a uh, few free characters which is also nice it has all that stuff another thing so this this is something that I'm completely unsure of if this is just a beta thing but if you go to the store and you look at the item exchange they have limited characters in the store now, if you played HSR, you know you can get light cones from the shop, so, like, that's not insane, right? But if you look over here, you can see this one is on a timer, and that's because Chian is a limited character. So, basically, what this means is I I'm pretty sure you don't actually get the, the whole character from this. I'm pretty sure this is only for copies of the character. However, what this means is that if you are saving up to try to max out a character, like, let's say you're free to play, but, like, you want to get E2, not E2, just, like, the, the second three copies of the character, <laughs> like, this helps tremendously tremendously because this is just like after saving up a really long time eventually you're going to be able to just buy a copy which is absurd it's absolutely amazing now if I get Uno reversed and they actually give you the whole character as opposed to just a copy of the character that would be even crazier but it does say it activates the corresponding sequence so that does make me think it's specifically for copies of them but I don't know I feel like this is a really really good thing either way that's a great thing for free-to-play players that want to save up to try to get uh, extra power level on their characters that they spent time saving for in the first place especially if people you know have like one favorite that they really want to max out it makes it a lot more achievable than having to save up you know a thousand pulls or whatever I don't know there's there's so many great things about this game that I think are very unique uh, a lot of people are quick to call this game a Genshin clone and like of course there's going to be things that are similar to Genshin because uh, games that want to be successful want to mimic the success of other games that were also successful it's why you saw so many battle royales come out right after Fortnite uh blew up PGR was the OG right but most people just know Fortnite and then all the game companies were like oh Apex Legends uh spell break my point is that you're gonna see some similarities it's the same genre of game and there's some things that I genuinely believe Genshin just did the best and it's not really possible to improve on at least not in my scope of knowledge and I, like some of those things are like you know if you see UI like I think that um one thing is like in the top like the buttons at the top this is mobile UI but it's just a thing that's really clean that every game is adopting because right? it just looks really clean successful games copy other games uh and then they make them their own and when they make them their own that's when they uh can find like true success and like their own fandoms and their own you know everything right you know Genshin people call it the Breath of the Wild clone but Genshin is nothing like Breath of the Wild at this point right the opening cut scenes the beginning of the game felt a lot like Breath of the Wild and then you get into the thick of the game and it's like oh this actually isn't at all and the more it's developed it's become less like it Weathering Ways already kind of has an identity of its own it sucks that it's gonna be tied to Genshin that's how it is right but the game already has so many unique systems to itself the combat feels very different the world feels very different and if they continue to innovate on that and keep adding to it I think this game will be incredibly successful I realized at the beginning of the video I didn't really go over all the the 
menu systems and stuff but uh just really quickly before i wrap up with my final thoughts um uh, basically here's the character screen it's really pretty i'll move to the other side wow it's still really pretty very nice so you can have you have like your weapon screen and stuff i think it looks really clean i think the way they did this ui is different enough from other like top gotcha games that are doing this like similar thing to have its own identity but still be really clean and not invasive so i like how they did it um you also have kind of like the skill tree thing it's not too complex like you're gonna level up you're gonna go in that order it is what it is this is gonna be your duplicate screen this is resonance chain is what they call it and uh it's a really different view of the character it's a really it's a really you know really shows off uh personality anyways i really think this game's gonna be super super successful in its own way i don't think anything's really gonna beat Genshin. I, I think Genshin was a bit of a freak of nature when it came to how fast it grew, uh, just because of COVID and like all the stars aligned to make that game like really explode. But I definitely see a lot of success for this game. And I hope that Kuro keeps making good decisions for the game, keeps taking community advice pretty seriously because they are, they've done an amazing job. CBT2 so far has not disappointed. Keep in mind, first impressions, I'm really early in, but I like it a lot. I'm really enjoying it. If you guys want to watch me play, if you want to learn anything about the game, you have questions, go check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash And and as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.